it's Blighty Day Fiance. Get out of my pub. <laughs> Have I been barred from I've been barred from the podcast already? I haven't done anything bad. I've never been barred from an establishment. Um I've been removed, but I've never been banned from coming back. Have you? I'm not going to answer that <laughs> on the grounds that I may incriminate myself <laughs> inadvertently. Good thing is there's a pub on every corner in this country, so uh, you get far from one, you just walk down the road and go to the next one. Having said that, not true. Very sad. Lots of them closing down. You can tell the sadness inside Richard is that it's not pub, 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 pub anymore. It's just pub, pub, it's pub, pub. It's just pub, pub. Yeah. <laughs> if you're joining us for the first time... Or even if you're joining us for a second, third, or fourth time, my name is Michelle. <laughs> Your name won't have changed. Uh, my name is Robin. Hello. With Rob- an I. With an I, not a Y. Yeah. Uh, Robin and I are a married couple. I'm American. I'm not. He's British. And uh, you're listening to our very unique coverage of the very first season or series, as we say in this country. Of 90 Day Fiancé UK. Correct. All of these things so far have been true. And this week I am thrilled to announce that we are going to be recapping not only 90 Day Fiancé colon happily ever after question mark (laughs) and sister wives. Yes. Not only and. Um, That is what we're going to be doing. Um, I haven't seen Sister Wise. I have seen all of Happily Ever After. Um, Look, it's worth saying at this point, there are, we know the cast for it, and there are some people in the cast who are, you know, pretty widely reviled. Um, I don't have much love in my heart for some of those people either. Not a big Ed Stan, really had enough of Angela. Um, We are going to cover them. Um, Now, we'll do it at the end of our podcast, so anyone that wants to opt out... um, totally get it and we'll let you know you know we're not going to talk about those people you know we're not going to creep into your ear and start talking about big ed that would be grotesque um here's very quickly here's here's my take on it totally understand that a lot of people don't want to touch some of those those characters and i have enormous love and respect for those writers those people on social those other podcasts who have decided you know to turn their backs on it totally get it my my personal point of view on that is that upsettingly, the network hasn't particularly listened to that and are continuing to put these people on the air. And so the only voices um, that are really getting heard now are the people that do like these uh, people, and I find that that enables them. Um, I think that Big Ed needs to live in a world where there are people calling him out rather than just ignoring him. And it used to be my career um, to pass, you know, I used to be a critic, so it's what I do. If I don't like something, I'm very comfortable saying I don't like it. Um, So we will cover them, because I think it's probably important to have those voices there, but in no way is that casting aspersions on anyone that doesn't. And of course, if you don't want to listen, we will uh, trigger warning ahoy before we talk about them. Yes, absolutely. And remember, you know what's best for you. Look after yourself. Don't subject yourself to media that is going to set you off or trigger uh, an unpleasant response because you're worth it. Right, life's too short. But some people want to hear people clowning on them. So, you know, hey, we're there for that. And, you know, miraculously, if they suddenly turn a new leaf and turn into deli- delightful people, um, you know, we'll be there for that too. That will not happen. No, definitely yeah. won't. And speaking of clownery, do we want to gently touch upon um, the reunion or the, excuse me, the tell-all of uh, 90 Day Original Recipe? All right, look. <sighs> Having just <laughs> having just said how I'm happy to talk about people I don't like, I don't, honestly, I haven't got the energy to talk about Jabri. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that that million dollar suit, uh, I hope he kept the receipt because it hadn't been hemmed. It was frayed like crap and he looked absolutely terrible. So, you know, the things he thinks are the best things about himself are the worst things in humanity. So good luck to you, chap. I think it says everything that his parents didn't want to be involved. It speaks volumes. Um, And I think the whole situation is sad. I don't feel sorry for him. Um, 
I don't feel sorry for my owner. No. I don't really feel sorry for the parents either because I don't think they're great. Um, no, I just think it's I think it's very telling that his parents have distanced themselves from the entire debacle. I mean, I I completely understand why. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's let's put that aside. He was popping off like a frog in a sock, which is a a new phrase that I've learned that I couldn't wait to use. <laughs> so I just have to sneak that one in there. Um, I thought Emily was surprisingly um, pleasant pleasant, yeah. and uh, I'm not going to say funny, but she sort of, she seemed like the kind of, of gal that I wouldn't mind going out for a drink with. Um, I've liked Kobe from the start and found him immensely warm and charming. Yeah, he's lovely. Um, so I'm, it's, it's. But- they didn't show like her dodgy stuff. They didn't show the scene in the barn and him telling her to fuck off and you no. know, all of that stuff. So again, these tell alls. I mean, like I liked the addition of uh Matty and Poodle. That was that was great. Um <laughs> You're gonna get in big trouble there. I think they said it themselves. <laughs> yeah, no, it was they they were clearly uh trying for that. I did enjoy Kenny and Tim. I Tim. thought Tim was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I did like it, and obviously Sean Robinson has a very narrow remit from which she can't uh, deviate. Yeah, her presenting style is a bit like someone um, on a hostage video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you just have to say certain words. And the words she has to say always are, um, so I don't think we're going to resolve this today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I keep thinking, imagine any other interview scenario where people just went, um, yeah, Mr. President, um, I suppose you're not going to answer that question. That's absolutely fine. Let's just move on. I I feel for her a lot because... I can see her getting, I can see the light behind her <laughs> eyes just draining away with each passing season. And I I can't imagine that any paycheck is worth having to sit on the stage and lob these softball bullshit questions I to know. people. But I will note, and this is something that I've been wanting to say for a long time, it really, really aggravates me that Questions about women's bodies, whether it be pregnancy right. or breastfeeding or always on the table. Always. Never talk about behavior on the, on these tell-alls anymore. They just talk about looks. How pregnant are you? Yeah. How long did you breastfeed? Is this too long Have you to had breastfeed? surgery? Have you had, like, what have you had done? Yeah. It's really awful and I'm sick of it. Right. I think if you're going to... If you're going to constantly bring up women's bodies, and I am saying women's bodies because all of these are women identifying. They do not do it to the men. um, They don't, not a single word. No, no one said to Patrick, (laughs) um, I see all your muscle is increasingly turning into blubber and you're starting to look like a thumb. Well, nobody said, hey, how'd you get her pregnant when you had like three sperm left that were... Well, already he, dead. He, he magically stopped taking the steroids, didn't he? Um, which means that he'd continued to do it, um, by the way, uh, even after getting caught for a second time. Um, we've had a lot of people writing in, haven't we? Yes. Asking why I think Patrick is the most revolting person in the 90 day universe. Um, do you want me to answer? I mean, I'll do it. It's a little rant. I do. I think you can... I think people would appreciate it. All right. Anyone that doesn't like uh, rants, you know, hit the fast forward button for a a couple of minutes. I I think, frankly, Robin, (laughs) the audience is still getting used to the sound of your voice. Oh, fine. (laughs) (laughs) Here's here's my take. Okay. And it does, it's the drug abuse, um, not the, it's the cheating, the sports doping. Um, if if you're in that world, and I'm not, um, frankly, my my sporting credentials are very very slight. Um, but I am aware that when you get to a certain level in any athletic or sporting context, you surrender years of your life for it. Right? You get up at the crack of dawn and you train all day and you swear and you might win your local, you know, title or heat and then move on to like a state or county level and then, you know, keep going and maybe nationals. And and I believe he was kind of nudging at, at, at the edges of an Olympic team and stuff like that. So you got to think, what about all the other people that also did all of those things, but didn't cheat? Um, he did it by 
stepping on their necks to get where he got. But probably it mean, literally. Yeah, probably literally. But it, it means that there are people out there who literally wasted years of their lives, had those years of their lives, that effort, those dreams stolen from them by this moron. And for me, it's a mini murder. I mean, it, it, it's such an incredible abuse of another human being to steal their dreams and to steal their lives. It's like putting someone in a coma or something for years, but it's it's worse because they had to go through all of that effort just to have it, it taken from them. And had he just done it once and been caught and seen the error of his ways, mm, okay, fine, I'll let that go. But he didn't, he did it again. And I honestly, I think that, that is vile, vile behaviour. It uh, some people might honestly prefer to be, you know, put out their misery than have the the, the the best years of their lives stolen from them like that. So that is what that man has done. Um, I have no way of knowing if the way people describe his current business also involves exploiting people, um, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. That seems to be his mo that he will do what ever it takes to uh, benefit himself and doesn't give a shit about anyone else. Honestly, like, Bilal's not a nice man, but I'm not aware that Bilal has, you know, deliberately ruined lives. Patrick has. I feel similarly about Stephanie, who sold her farts, (laughs) because, (laughs) you know, she was eating cans of beans, she was eating, like, broccoli. I've had IBS for years, (laughs) and, and my farts are real and no, nobody would pay for mine. Right. I mean, she cheated. That's right. There's your, no other way of saying your it. Your years of fart collection have been stolen from you by Stephanie. Um, speaking of which, didn't we get an email this week? We sure did. Uh, the title of which is <laughs> Where to Poo in Victoria, London. Not Victorian London. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe in Victorian London you can poo anywhere. Yeah, just anywhere. Yeah. Um, not a 90-day... Fiance UK cast member, I swear, but I will be visiting my British girlfriend from Canada in a few weeks. We've been listening to your podcast and want to test out your offer to direct me to a place to poop in the UK. (laughs) We'll be staying near Victoria Station. Oh, that's a great location for you for a few days. And now I want to know, what's your top three? Cheers, T2. Oh, T2, you're calling my bluff. I, I think like in our f- first podcast, I've or second, I might have said about how uh, it was always my dream to develop an app um, where people rated and reviewed uh, public toilets. Um, I am an expert. Um, absolutely, This is like memory, man. That's a deep cut. Everyone stop listening to this podcast and listen to Atletico Mints. Memory man's genius. Um, don't stop listening to this podcast. Uh, um this is, this is my secret talent, right? I know toilets. Boy, do I know toilets. Um, so yeah, fine. Come at me. Call my bluff. I can, I can meet this challenge. Um, so here's the thing, like around Victoria, obviously Victoria station is there. Um, a surprising choice will be actually the station toilets. Now, usually I would say avoid like the plague. And when I say avoid like the plague, I mean avoid or you'll get the plague. Um, the toilets on Platform 1 were refurbished fairly recently. They moved them outside for further refurbishment, but I believe that is finished. And they're really rather nice. Um, but the shopping centre upstairs in Victoria Station, I think may have even won awards for its toilet. So take the escalator by paper chase and have a very nice time there. Um, while we're doing shopping centres, Cardinal Place, sort of over the road from the station, downstairs by the m and quite, quite decent, decent toilets there. Um, I like uh, department stores, uh, are always my choice. So if you can do a little walk to Sloan Square, Peter Jones, I think, has got fairly decent toilets on all levels in the store. Um, Recommend that. I'm doing more than three because, you know, why not? Um, Give Hotel 41 a go. So it's above the Rubens Hotel. It's the top floor. It's the best hotel in London. I think it won, like, the trip advisors. And the toilets are exquisite there. Hotels are always a great place to go. Just walk in. Don't meet anyone's side. Just head straight for the toilets. Also, it's not in the Victoria area, but the Landmark Hotel on Marleybone Road near Baker Street, that is a great place for a poo. Uh, <laughs> and my last <laughs> recommendation in that area is the Curzon Cinema, which is a lovely independent cinema with a very nice bar and very nice toilet that you can enjoy at your leisure. Now, are any of those pay toilets? Yeah, the ones in the station, I believe, might cost you 20 or 30 pence. Oh, no, you know what? I think they're free now. Are they? Yeah, have a few poos. 
Yeah, it's been ages since. I- anyway, thank you for that. <laughs> um, if you have any other uh, toilet related questions, uh, Robin knows Bristol pretty well. Yep. As well. Uh, Ox- Oxford. I'm very good on where to yep, go in Oxford. Yep. Plenty of uh, other. Uh, tourist destinations within the UK and beyond. So write to us at <laughs> ladydavebeyonce at gmail.com for a, more advice. It's a new strand. Okay. Shall we get into it? Oh, yes. All right. Who are we going to start with this week? I'm going to nominate Katie and Alejandro. A little bit of love and romance to kick yeah. things off. Yeah. A little bit of, ooh, I'm wearing the wrong clothes for romance. you ever worn the wrong clothes at a really pivotal, romantic moment of your life? I don't know about pivotal, romantic moment of my life, because there have been so few of those. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Okay. How about you? Uh, only the usual, not getting a proper, like, invite to a wedding and turning up, like, not in tales that's pretty rough and i'm like well you know maybe if you don't like email me and you send me a proper invite i would have got the full dress code but that was a bit rough being surrounded by people with a very specific aesthetic and i'm just i'm in a suit but that was rough okay it's very gauche to do an invite uh to a black tie or white tie event via email yeah it wasn't my fault. That's the first problem. Yeah, I didn't enjoy that day. Anyway, um, so Katie doesn't eat anything out of the sea. She says it's the equivalent of eating <laughs> a rat. Are we getting straight into that? I St- just, I just want to get the food part over with. Oh, because oof, we could all feel a little bit stomach journey on this one couldn't we did that were they the ones that ate fish and chips earlier in the season i don't know and honestly i couldn't be bothered to look back <laughs> i probably should have done but I, I i really thought they had i think she's been hoisted by her own fishing line here <laughs> <laughs> she's been caught up in her own net of deceit you know what though to be fair and i wonder now i don't know what uh what order they filmed this in, what the sequence was. But do you think her illness the next morning had anything to do there is with suggestion. the octopus? Yeah, there is. Like, this isn't, look, and I know Katie probably, and I'm sure she's learned by now, needs to stop using the word foreign, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but seafood in countries where you're not very familiar, like, perfectly safe for the locals totally get it because you build up like an immunity over time to things like we've all seen red herd war of the worlds that's how the aliens got killed right you do have to be a little bit careful when you travel so it could be some of that people do get sick when they travel right like people that live in delhi don't get delhi belly right but Western tourists, when they go there, very frequently get bad stomachs just because you haven't built up that immunity over time. And it's the same coming here. But it's not just that. I th- I think, um, for example, I don't typically... Now, as an American, and other Americans will understand this, I grew up having ice in my drinks all the time. Yeah. Uh, when I go somewhere that isn't America or England, I never have no. ice in anything. No. Uh, particularly Don't in, have ice, don't have salad. Yeah, exactly. So it could have been... Is that why nickel? <laughs> when she went to Morocco, she wouldn't eat any of the salad because she was worried about the, the tap water. I'm sure that's what was motivating it. And yeah. not that uh, she subsists entirely on frozen chicken nuggets. Okay. Um, now look, the octopus cocktail, I have a real problem, and you know this, I have a real problem in shows like this. Larry is often the one that is pointed to, I think he was in season four of 90 Day Fiance, that, who didn't eat the pig oh, yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah, that was that was bad. Uh, it, yeah, I have a huge problem with people turning their nose up at local cuisine. Huge problem. 
Well, that was different because they slaughtered the pig specifically for him and the whole family was there and, you know, it was really rude. Right. I think, but listen, if you don't eat seafood to begin with, octopus is a dip, like I won't eat octopus. I don't like the texture. Um, Do you just think about Timothy from The Boys? Oh, God. I do really like ceviche, though. Okay. And I love sushi. As you know. Right. But even then, you know, there's there's certain things where I'm like, mm, that's not that's not really for me. Okay. Here's my take on seafood. I never want seafood in its natural element. Like it shouldn't be in something wet. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like if it's still swimming, I ain't eating it. And like it should be very, very dry. I don't mind dry. <laughs> Not, no, actually, this is true. I like fish well done, for example. Like if it's quite rare and still a bit wet, nah, it's got to be dry. So that stuff was swimming in. No, I hear what you're saying. Oof. And and I think really and truly the most diabolical thing ever created is prawn salad. Or prawn cocktail, as we call it here. Yeah, yeah, which is basically shrimp in mayonnaise. I've never eaten it. I'm not uh, big into shellfish. I'm not um, big into mayonnaise. Jism of the devil. No, I, I'm i not either. Okay, so you can come for me on that. It, it would be a weird hill to die on, but I find <laughs> enough of it on the ground that I think I can't be alone <laughs> in it. <laughs> <laughs> and we put mayonnaise on every. You cannot get a sandwich oh, in this country without mayonnaise. No, you can't get away from now, it. It's Amer- awful. Americans get confused about the fact that we butter our bread for most sandwiches. I saw a thing the other day going, I've been watching uh, this. I, it must have been the Great British Baking Show. We've discussed that. Um, and how people butter their sandwich. And we absolutely do because no one wants dry. You've got to have a moisture maker in a sandwich, right? And butter f- like plays that role really well. And I get the mayonnaise also plays that role really well, but it's disgusting and vile and, sh- and evil and should be condemned. Um, but it's everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I think, is it Mary Rose sauce that you find in prawn cocktail? Is that the name of the liquid? Why would I know? I think it's called Mary Rose, which of course is the name of a famous shipwreck as, as, as well. So like... There's like connotations of like mass death. If you all death. could see my face right now, <laughs> it, this is, we need to move on. Yeah. It looked, look, no shade to Alejandro and absolutely no shade to the beautiful people in Mexico, but that looked gross and I wouldn't have eaten it either. Um, I did think it was interesting that she mentioned rat because um, I swear there's, and I'm going to get this wrong and people are going to get annoyed with me. There is a country in South America where they do yeah. fry rats. And Bolivia, I think. I think it's a delicacy, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Maybe it's more than one country. And I thought it was pigs. Peru. I think Peru is Well, maybe pigs. you're right. Okay. I, look, I don't want to say. I'm just saying. All right, look. This isn't the rat podcast, but I could go on for a long time about how poor Mr. Rat has been very maligned by history. Oh, tell that to the bubonic plague. Nope. That All right. was just a spread by dogs. Let's move forward <laughs> to something far more pleasant. Alejandro is taking Katie for a hike. She is not dressed for a hike. I... Don't know how she survived being in the back seat of a car when she's sick to her stomach. Here's the thing. She complains and like says how she's feeling, but she doesn't whine. There is a huge difference between her and so many other people we've seen on shows like this, right? She still does it and she's sort of up for it, even though I reckon she's feeling rough as hell. And I don't know that I could have gone down a mountain feeling like that. No, she has nerves of steel. And she's got something else of steel if she managed to do that, yeah. Oh, I mean, I would have been, I I would have collapsed, like, immediately. I I wouldn't have been been able to handle that. Um, It was even hard to watch. Uh, Even in her sunniness 
and eternal optimism she was still effing and blinding yeah, she all was, the way but down I, d- I don't mind that it wasn't a your lazy situation no 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 no, it no, wasn't, you no. Know, no she didn't and she didn't complain about the the walk no i did notice that they cut away to a dog who was almost certainly a golden retriever really enjoying herself near the waterfall so i reckon nala stowed away in a in a hand baggage probably and, and snuck in that that go fund me that we did uh <laughs> that paid off we flew nala out for that scene is nala a golden retriever um i don't know yellow. she might be a lab yellow dog or something anyway moving forward um all the animals in the forest are singing a knockoff knockoff version of kiss the girl (laughs) little bluebirds on his shoulder uh from the little mermaid to alejandro he was properly nervous he was really nervous because the stakes were not artificially high it's it's just it's weird i'm not used to this show being real um we said it before we'll say it again like since they've really been on the show and they haven't so much in the last few weeks, a few other people have come forward, but they continue to be the heartbeat. Really I, and truly, yeah. I, I believe he loves her because she's incredibly lovable. And I believe that she loves him because he is a good man. I mean, just a fundamental, and those are hard, right? Um so I believe it completely. And I believe he was genuinely nervous because when he proposed, he wasn't doing it for a photo op. He was doing it because he actually wants to marry her. And no. I and can't I, remember the last time I actually saw that on TV and there were tears in my eyes and I had goosebumps and I didn't think I would and I did. And I would have too were I not uh, up to my eyeballs and sedatives, but that's another story <laughs> for another day. <laughs> Um, it it was it was a beautiful proposal. I thought it was so cute when she asked whether they turn the waterfall off at night or if it's natural. Okay, was it just me or was that waterfall a bit shit? That waterfall was fine. What's important is that it was special to him and now it's special to them. It looked like a sewage outlet. It did. Robin! I'm sure there are gorgeous waterfalls in Mexico, but that was not one of them. Ugh. We're gonna we're gonna have to cut that out because people are gonna be. That's okay. actually, you know what? I think you I think you can probably get away with almost anything because right now all anybody does is swoon over your your English accent. I'm just saying I don't think it was the best of Mexico. And I'm just saying you get used to it after a while. I, I'm not coming for Mexico. I am coming for that specific waterfall that I felt didn't do its best on the day. Okay, well, on your head be it. <laughs> on your head be it, not mine. Can I wear a shower cap? You can wear whatever you like. Um, should we go on to Victoria and Sean? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so when last we saw this couple victoria decided that she was a home wrecker based on assumptions that she made that he didn't confirm or deny i still don't understand that situation i still think there's a big difference between and maybe look maybe i'm being unfair by giving him the benefit of the doubt i feel like i try so hard to be fair with her but it's she makes it very difficult we'll talk about this in a second there was a a moment when she became a human being in this episode but uh and i'll be a bit more charitable there but right for now no think about the words that you're using because you were not like if you were a homewrecker he would have left his wife for you is there any suggestion of that in any way? If there's stuff that's being cut out that we're not <laughs> privy to, well, we can only judge what we see. And she's, I mean, from what we see, she's got the conclusions, Matt, from Office Space, and she's just jumping all over the place. Like, is the ex-wife upset about the fact that she stole her man away? It's that's the thing. Because again, I don't that's have, a that's a prerequisite for home wrecking. I don't have enough information. I mean, I don't think. All right, for example, think whatever you want of me. I've dated married men before. Okay. Oh boy. In the past, 
And I'm not saying that it was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. I'm just saying that's what I did. And uh, their wives, as far as I know, didn't know anything about it. Now, neither of them left their wives for me. One of them was at least at the very least physically separated by more than one ocean from his wife. So, you okay. know, to make of that what you will. My point is there's a big difference between that and when you and I dated where you were still married, but you had been separated from your wife for about 18 months yeah. at that point. Yeah. Your ex-wife, I should say. Yeah. All right. So there's lots of in-betweens and yeah, there's a big difference between and, and asking questions like, were you still married to her? It, he could have been legally married to her and they were separated. It's meaningless. The question I want to know is, were you living together? Like, did she believe you were in an ongoing relationship? That's the only question that's important. Did she believe you were in an ongoing relationship? Right. Not did you, because that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Like when one person goes, oh yeah. Now in my heart and my head, I was already, we were separated, but the other person didn't know. No, that's bullshit and you're a cheating scumbag. But if the other side knows it's done and it's over, it is not cheating. Right, exactly. And at no point has she asked questions that might elicit that kind of response. She's done plenty of telling him what she thinks his response is going to be and then trying to catch him in a lie. It's just, it's very difficult. I can tell that she's stressed. I can tell she's having a hard time and I feel for her as a human being, but it, it, unless there's a whole lot that they're leaving out and if there is, I'm open to hearing it. Yeah, but broadcast it. All right. So, I'm not going to go on my usual rant about these two because it's very boring by this point. But what I will say is I do feel that either she or the show has denied me the enjoyment of Sean as a character because I think he could have delivered so much more. And seeing him reduced to this man who can barely get a word in, who just says sorry and gets shouted at, it's just, it's not made the most of him. And I think that is a huge casting waste um, if it, you do want to see more of him, I highly recommend you follow his Instagram where he's put together a memento like or <laughs> seven like a uh, series of puzzling clues about his past. Uh, it's amazing, immensely entertaining and creative and I love it. Um, what I will say, though, is that that uh, divorce certificate was was a barrow bond from Die Hard. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Current references only. Yeah. But you know what? The girl who went to Japanese school should maybe be able to read one or two words of Japanese. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Maybe ask for a refund of that Japanese school. Yeah. So she's she's going to see a friend that she met through Japanese class and who she in fact traveled to Japan with. So her little weeaboo, boo, boo, <laughs> weeaboo, boo, boo. Wee -boo, boo. Um, what, did she have a name? Did we get her name? I don't remember. Oops. Let's say it's like Sarah Jane okay. or Claire, because it probably was one of those. Fine. Um, she says she feels scared to lose him and she's not going to bother again. I think that's a good idea. If it doesn't work out. <laughs> uh, you pointed out that she didn't laugh yep. at the end of every sentence when yep. she was talking to this friend. That's right. She didn't do, I mean, look, the charitable way of saying, and again, I'm bored of talking about this, the charitable way of saying it is she has a nervous tick where she does that <laughs> at the end of every sentence. I see it differently. I see it as more of a, even if it's subconscious and aggressive. That was such a weird sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, hers is a weird sound, a stupid little laugh. I think it's aggressive, even if it's subconscious. It's a way of shutting down the other person before they even get to talk. Um, I think it, it, it argues with a person in advance when you make a noise like that before it's their turn to speak. She didn't do that with her friend. I thought it was really interesting. And for a moment, just a brief moment, I almost liked her. I don't dis. I look, I don't dislike her. I find her hard work 
And at this stage in their journey, it's difficult for me to ascertain whether this is a bad edit that she's getting or if this is her personality and she keeps going around and around and around in the same circles. Well, she needs to think about the effect her personality has on other people. A little bit like thumb in a suit. Totally agree. Um, Now, look, he shows her... uh, a divorce certificate on his phone, supposedly. She asks if she showed it to a Japanese-speaking friend, would they say it's a divorce certificate? Um, Here's an idea. If you have a (laughs) Japanese-speaking friend, can you spend half an hour having them translate so that the two of you can get to the bottom of whatever the fuck your problems are? Yeah, instead of getting rosy... Uh, It was Rosie, right, to do the interrogation slash interview last week. Maybe get your Japanese-speaking friend. Maybe that would be more helpful. I did really like... Unless, of course, her Japanese-speaking friend is just Pikachu. (laughs) (laughs) That is possible. You play Pokemon Go for long enough, they do become... I mean, (laughs) my 100 IV shiny Metagross is is my my best friend. Who's that... (laughs) <laughs> but there's humans in it too. Like, who's that? Like, who's the like really camp guy who talks like that? Well, there are there are trainers and professors, okay, and stuff. But there, there is a non binary. There's about. a non binary team rocket leader, okay. which is quite Cordalo, which is quite progressive uh, for. And are they the the ones that you know what I'm talking about from the show where they sort of like? Oh, you're talking uh, James, Jesse, and James. Yes. Yes. Um, what's the rhyme again? I don't know. Oh, I've forgotten it now. I haven't retained it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Sean says it's hard to lie about everything, and it's such a full scale story, and he's not such a great author. And if I'm reading into that language, that statement, which is beautiful, by the way, yeah, beautifully put, very poetic. Uh, if only uh, Dolores had said that. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. I think that what he's saying is that what she's talking about is so crazy and overblown that he couldn't come up with something like that yeah but the way it played was my big bundle of bullshit isn't really bundled well enough and some of the bullshit's coming out well he would dearly like the argument to be over i would dearly like this segment to be over i find it really weird um i think it's time for our weekly justice for callum (laughs) (laughs) moment i find it really weird that victoria and sean has had this much airtime and we are on episode seven out of what initially we believed was going to be an eight episode run by the way yeah i thought so too now they may have and some of the cast believe that as well um they may well have recut this into more episodes and you know heaven forbid anyone should ever get told um there's no way of knowing there could be 30 for all we know but i find it really weird that victoria and sean has run this long and we still haven't seen Callum. We're not talking to the cast, by the way. No, that was something on Instagram ages ago where it's like, come on, release all eight episodes. So right from the beginning, I was thinking there were going to be eight episodes of this thing. Um, but we'll see. But oh, poor Callum. I, I really hope that at least um, the pizza that you had tonight when you were sitting with all your family <laughs> um, was hot and they didn't scrimp on the toppings. Um, and I hope that, you know, um, at least a few people came round for the viewing party tonight and best of luck for the future, mate. He's up in Perth, Scotland. Oh, that's right. Do you Not know where Perth, that is? Australia. We were a little confused because someone's listening to the show in Perth and we thought it was Perth, Australia, didn't we? Yeah. Maybe it's Callum. Callum, we're on your side. If you're listening. We've been waiting. When you When you do eventually make an appearance we'll get our own mylar balloons right <laughs> <laughs> we'll have our own viewing party we for you fucking party when callum makes the show we're so looking forward to it <laughs> <laughs> Just like Richard's looking forward to getting to see Boo, to see his Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why it's called that? It's quite convenient. Everywhere should be named for what you do there. Uh, we're living in London. That means that people do Luns here. No idea what that no. means. No. 
I don't I don't even know what Londinium would mean. That's the that's the Roman name, isn't it? That's right. I used to know stuff like that. Yeah, there were like Roman names for everywhere. Like Verulanium is now St Albans. Interesting. Yeah. You see nice that? place, St. Albans. <laughs> nice place, Verulanium. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Cebu. Cebu, Jimmy. For our Scottish audience. Interesting. Uh, so, Kath is... Kath, excuse me. I keep calling her Kath because that's how I've written <laughs> her in the notes. <laughs> and I, I guess... I keep thinking about, and no one is going to get this reference, but I, I keep thinking of Nighty Night. Hi, Kath. Hi, Kath. I thought you were going to say Kath and Kim. Uh, Kath and Kim also. Right. Tremendous show. Should we Love talk about show. this show? We should, yeah. <laughs> so Kathleen is with her brother. She's packing up um, for the little uh, couple's getaway that she's about to have with Richard at the Radisson. Um, in good spot, good yeah. hotel spot. We got it wrong before. Um, back with Katie, it was, wasn't it? When we said that she was staying in a travel lodge, it was a premier inn. Yeah. So at the moment, we're zero for one, but I think we might be one for two now. I think they showed the name of the hotel unblurred. I'm taking the point anyway. <laughs> so she's getting packed up and. Her brother, whose name I don't remember and didn't write down, unfortunately, is saying words to the effect of the the time that they spend in this hotel is so that Richard can reassess if he still likes her, <laughs> which is a funny way of putting it. I don't know if I would have had that conversation with my brother. Maybe people should periodically do that in relationships. You should have a week where you reassess whether you like each other. Well, I think COVID has made it too easy to stay at home, you know? We've gotten so used to it, and we love our house so much, we don't really see um, a big reason to leave, aside from the constant barbecues. I haven't left the house in days. This is how I leave the house now. I do it, like, virtually. Is that Okay. Um, I think you could probably get out for a brisk walk now and then. Yeah. Um, so Kath says Papa heard a lot about sex tourists and has lots of doubts about Richard's intentions, and she's hoping that that will change. Um, the stakes are naturally very high because there is a possibility that the relationship will be over if her father doesn't approve. Now, if you want an example of how not to handle a meeting with a father-in-law, <laughs> I will happily direct you to a little show called Life After Lockup, uh, in which a gentleman named Chance Earl Pitt, cousin, a uh, distant cousin of Brad Pitt, if if he's to be believed. Yeah. I don't think he is. No. Um, although I mean, it is possible. They are in Missouri. And of course, we're all brothers and sisters. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, don't know if any of you caught that. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't and you want to fast forward 30 seconds, basically Chance says to his father-in-law in response to a question like, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a part-time sex slave and a part-time... Sex machine. Sex machine or sex instructor, something like that. Yeah. It's the equivalent of, <laughs> of showing up to a family reunion with one of those T-shirts that says, like, female body inspector on <laughs> it or, or uh, sex instructor, first lessons free. It's it's quite aggressive. I know you're giving me that I'm being a white walker into the microphone thing. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> um, they kind of spoiled this one uh, with the coming up thing that we know that Richard does put his foot in it. But at the moment, we can all be very tranquil and assume that he will persuade her dad that he's neither of those things and he's very lovely. Have you ever had, like, awkward interactions with fathers of women you dated uh no everyone loves me uh <laughs> um i've had bad things with aunts 
racist aunts. Racist aunts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We it, won't have to go any further than that. No. Um, no. I, I, I've lost before I even began in one situation where it's like, yeah. I smell what you're stepping in. Yeah. Um, so anyway, fingers crossed for that. Uh, I have written in my notes that Kathleen on the way to the airport was like an action sequence. I don't know if it was the way that it was filmed where it kind of felt like the beginning of a James Bond movie. The only James Bond movie I've ever seen, which is the one <laughs> where he's like, he's like riding. Is it the one where he's a spy? It's the one where he's a spy and he's there's like motorcycles on rooftops or something. That's there's all, like all of them. Big, <laughs> If it's not a motorcycle, it's a skidoo. Uh, but you can pretty much substitute it out. It's like, do you remember? Oh God, I'm. I literally just walked into something where you're going to say, "No, I'm not as old as you." Okay. <sighs> Back in when I was a little boy, uh-huh. and there were television programs like The A Team, uh huh, they would be incredibly formulaic. Like you could literally say to the minute. This is the scene where this happens. Uh, this is where they have a little victory. This is where it all turns around and goes wrong again. This is where they build a machine and defeat the baddies. And it would happen like by clockwork. Absolutely. You know, and Bond movies are exactly the same. This will happen. This will happen. This will happen. This, except for the latest one, which I'm not going to spoil. Yeah. I didn't see it. Needless to say. No. Do you know, I was just thinking of that I, I wanted to um, bring to our listeners' attention. There is an ancient pair of swim trunks with all your little swim badges on it from your swimmies when you were a little boy. When I was a little boy, yeah. And it's rather adorable. And I think if there's a high enough demand for it, I might take a picture of it. Of my swim your little pants. swim trunks they were so cute and you got all your little swim badges on them what is this turning into <laughs> how is this relevant? i don't look it's totally relevant because right. eventually i'll skip over the part where they meet at the airport and richard gets down to his skivvies oh yeah and he's wearing little short pants he well little union flat pants um for our beautiful American listeners and people not in the United Kingdom, please be aware of the fact that our flag is referred to as the Union flag, not the Union Jack, which is only, f- um, what's the word? Flown? Yeah, you fly a flag. Yeah. That, yeah, only flown on naval vessels. Really? Yeah. Union Jack is a sea thing. It's the sea flag. Otherwise, it's referred to as the Union flag. What? How do you refer to it with, when it's on Jerry Hallowell? Ill-fitting. <laughs> but only because her bosoms were pushed up to her chin. I had quite an alarming time at Jerry Halliwell's house in the Hollywood Hills save it for the Save it for the Patreon. <laughs> save it for the Patreon. It was a disturbing day. Um, All right, we'll save it for my Hollywood corner. Yeah, we'll save it for Robin's showbiz corner. Yeah. I can't wait for you to write the jingle for that because I know it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be the sound of a man dropping some names. <laughs> clang, clang, <laughs> clang. <laughs> so uh, look, look, um, I know that she gave him a lovely massage and was probably expecting a three-year overdue good time um and bless her um no one no one wants to be disappointed after you got yourself all hot and bothered right but but poor richard like there is no way a man of his size got any sleep on a plane no way at all so the fact that he had any energy at all when he showed up was kind of remarkable yeah i mean as you know i have to be um heavily sedated just to get on a plane in the first place so straight another eighteen thing you're like ba from the 18 <laughs> i'm getting on, on a plane fool that's you is that what happened yeah they would drug him and get him on the plane and then he would wake up in another country and he'd be like oh you did it again and what was his name ba baracus was the character's name mr t 
um, is, oh, is, is the okay. actor. I get it now. I was a really big Mr. T fan. Me and my mate John um, collected sort of 18 memorabilia. I got a lovely, it's somewhere in the house, actually, a lovely 18 digital watch. Love that. And um, and I remember we tracked down like a video copy of this movie that he did sort of around the same time, which is him hanging out with like local kids in the hood and teaching them to stay off drugs and stuff. It's one of the, like, it's the archetypal 80s TV movie. Aww. It's I hope awful. it worked. No, all the kids are, uh, <laughs> all the kids uh, fell, fell victim to drugs. No, they didn't. No, I don't know. <laughs> the kids working in Hollywood, weren't they? They probably did. Anyway, um, yeah, not much boom, boom in the room room that night no do you think that little richard had jet lag i've Is wondered that the, the about the kindest that. way of putting it i've wondered about that because i've heard that your insides you as in a person <laughs> a human that your insides kind of like crinkle up like a an empty water bottle well it's high pressure air. it's yeah. high, high pressure at thirty thousand feet now the question though is like, does that high pressure, does that like squeeze all the blood down so your Richard stays little? Or does it squeeze it into the extremities, in which case your little Richard will become a big Richard? Well, what's your experience been? Um, I, I, am, I am not a member of the Mile High Club. I have had no fun experiences on planes. None at all. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> 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 if anyone out there is an expert on like dicks in the air um, let us know penile aviation um we would like to know whether high altitude is 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 good for you richard or not i have never thought about that before maybe it's the thing maybe it's almost impossible to join the mile high club maybe it's like folding a <laughs> what's the phrase i have i've always written it off because even in business class, which I've, I'm not saying I've ridden in, um, the lavatories are very small. Yeah. Um, you can't fit two average-sized adults in there. Well, that's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> You're sort of folding one person into another, aren't you? I, d- I don't see it working. That's how that works. Anyway... Um, they go mattress shopping. Oh, sorry. Before that, they get, uh, the toe tattoos. They do. Um, I, it took me a minute to get the joke. People out there might not have got the joke. It took me a minute to. Camel toe. Camel toe. Right? Yes. I don't mind it. I think it's quite funny. I think it's sweet. I, I even liked the artwork. I was scared at first because it really looked like clip art when it was on the computer and they were sort of Yeah, I expected you know, a little devising it. A little tattoo of a paper clip to pop up and go, It looks like you're getting a tattoo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that didn't happen. Um no, they were nice. Little ta- little little guys kissing. Yeah. Yeah, I quite liked it. I think we should get um like uh, a little lady moose and a man moose on our knuckles so we can have matching moose knuckle <laughs> tattoos <laughs> uh, can you mock that up at least i will mock it can up. you do people are really into your photoshop skills you are incredible at it i will i will pretend that we've had that done okay i'm unblemished by tattoos not that um tattoos are a blemish at all sometimes they're absolutely remarkable i have no tattoos at all you don't either do you no if i had all the tattoos that i had planned to get my entire back would just be covered in (laughs) crossed out initials (laughs) 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 so i'm really glad i didn't yeah for me it's not like there's none of those arguments about oh you're regretting when you're older i mean you know fuck that um for me it's just i regret everything almost immediately and i know i would just be haunted by having made a decision i don't like decisions so an irrevocable decision doesn't sit well with me it's one of those things that my mother really put me off quite early on like uh and my mom confessed to this (laughs) that she knew that i was deathly afraid of germs and infections and getting sick in general uh as a child and 
as a young adult. And so she steered me clear of getting any tattoos or piercings because she, she told me that she knew someone or some other per that apocryphal other person who got sepsis or <laughs> hepatitis or something, you know, that person that you never meet. Right. All those people you see walking around or like on the street with tattoos, all of those, that, yeah. that doesn't teach you anything that it is completely safe and fine. No, There's the- a, but you know what? I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I am always convinced I will be that one in a million. Yeah. Why take the chance? Yeah. Well, cause you know, got to live. I just feel like it's a silly thing to spend money on. Yeah. But you know what? Do what you like. Your body's a temple. Decorate it the way you want. Right. Um, my friend got a tattoo on also on her big toe, but on the bottom of her big toe, that's a smiley face, uh, so that when she dies, <laughs> the mortician wow. sees the smiley face and smiles. Has a little chuckle. It's adorable, and it says everything about the kind of person she is. So I just, I treasure that about her. She has some tattoos that I think are quite ill-advised, especially now. But that one, I think, is really sweet. I wonder what would look good with a tag around its neck, like a tie. (laughs) All right, you got me inspired now. Answers on a postcard-shaped email, please. Um, So, yeah, yeah, mattress shopping. We'll move on. Mattress shopping. Um... Uh, I am not a fan of shopping scenes on the 90-day broadcast. No, empire. because they're always they're always designed to elicit the same response, yeah. which is... The woman wants to spend yep. money, the man is mean. Correct. Right? Uh, that's how it always is. Or it's wedding dress shopping, which is quite possibly the most boring thing in the world Ugh. to watch for anyone that isn't involved in the wedding right or it's renting a tuxedo Ugh. it's all of that they they are never good scenes but this one was really good fun the only time i like wedding dress shopping scenes is on love after lockup or any of those franchises because they are always <laughs> it, it's just there's such a level of discomfort that comes with disclosing that your fiance is yeah. incarcerated or oh, that, when they buy the dress and the person's still in prison. Yes. Yeah, that's always good. Has oh, that yeah. happened no, before? She, she can't come and try it. I'm trying it on for her kiss then. Yeah. Yeah, that has happened. Yeah, there's that story never goes over well. Like nobody can ever say, oh, congratulations. I'm so happy for you starting your life over again. Hope you don't you know, go back to prison. No. It's always like, wow, I need to lose my prison weight. Anyway, I <laughs> I take pleasure in very sad things. So. Yeah, well, that's, that's fine. Um, that's one of them. But and this was a good shopping scene. It I, was. I thought. Um, I thought it was a little unfair of her to not understand his desire to test a mattress before purchasing it. All I can imagine is, like, she said that she sleeps on a like a rock hard plank, like on the on the floor. If all mattresses in the Philippines are like that, then I guess there's no point in testing them, right? It's, it's probably a tatami mat type feature. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Tatami. It's like a flat mat that you. That one might sleep on. Mm. I hope I'm getting that right. I feel free to correct me, yeah. anybody. <laughs> but a soft mattress, like a Western style mat, you got yeah, to, you you don't got see them. to test it. Having said that, I've taken some punts on mattresses and boxes recently and been pleasantly surprised. Oh, I love our mattress. I love our mattress. I mean, for me, leaving the house is hard. Leaving the bed is even harder. So... That's how much I love our mattress. Um, They settle on a bunk bed so that Kathleen's family can keep it and have two beds after she leaves, which I think is really nice. It's very thoughtful. And in the meantime, they can have a a very, um, let's just say, I wouldn't want to be on the top bunk if they were on the bottom bunk. I would be worried about the rocking and the swinging situation. Yeah, but they are going to put them side by side for their purposes. (laughs) And then the bed will be reassembled like a transformer. (laughs) For, for other use. It's better than taking a bottle of wine and a bunch of flowers, isn't it? When you when you go around to visit the family. 
Hello, my name's Richard. Um, I'm just like Merritt Weaver in Nurse Jackie, and I... <laughs> wearing a rave scrub <laughs> from the 90s. He'll probably get changed before he goes and sees their family. Uh, hello, I'm Richard. I bought you a bed. I got a sexually themed tattoo, but I am absolutely not a sex tourist. <laughs> no. I just did a nude quiz, but I am definitely not a sex tourist. Yeah. Um, and on that topic, Kathleen is upset about it. Um, they have very, very different views on this. Uh, her perspective is that it's like prostitution. He shouldn't be sharing his uh, private parts publicly. And that's where the line ought to be drawn. And for him, it's I, I don't, again, we've talked about this before, how I, th I think when we did our crossover episode yeah. that a, a naturist quiz or a naturist anything isn't no, very sexual. It's, not, very it's sex. not, but that doesn't matter because what matters is that she's not comfortable with it. And I think in the scene, we, we, we got a real example of, of Rich's head, right? Because his default position is to go, well, I'll do whatever I want. Uh, because, you know, that, there is that in him, right? Yeah. And he says that awful thing about handbags. And, but he, as soon as he does it, like, he knows he can be better than that, right? So I'm not saying he won't put his foot in things, and I'm not saying he's perfect, but give me any day a person who is willing to uh, change or be corrected or listen to reason than, you know, someone who entrenches themselves. Or listen and validate their partner. Yeah. Which we is, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's a rarity on this show. Yeah. And across all these franchises. I mean, I think 99.9% .9 of all the problems that come up in the 90 day universe between couples is one person absolutely categorically refuses to even consider the other person's perspective. Yeah, or change their behavior because right. it's causing the other person upset. So, all right, not the best of Richard in that particular scene, but also sort of the best of Richard because, you know, he showed how he listens. And he rightly agrees that he should keep his mouth shut because Kathleen is not materialistic. No. Um... That's all I have for them, too. It seems promising. I really like... Do you know what I really like is seeing couples have a nice time together? Yeah, I know. It really, really does bring joy to my heart. I don't need constant drama. I don't need back-to-back -back fighting. I don't need rehashing of the same fight or same issue over and over. Well, that is the big problem I've got with the whole franchise, that they decide what the topic is for one of the couples, like early on in the season, and then they just play that out week after week after week after week. And I don't want that. I want to see what is this week's challenge? What's happening now? You know, that's a lot more interesting. So this one's moving. Um, like I said, I, I have horrible feelings that it's going to move in a nasty direction because they sort of spoiled it, that Richard's going to do something awful next week. But for this week, once again, Richard gets two thumbs up. Keep it up, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we go on to Emma and Hussein? Yes. Um... All right. <laughs> you know, in the interstitials, yeah, when they have her against a very bad green screen, really bad. Do you remember that? I, this is another Spice Girls <laughs> reference, but do you remember the video for "To Become One"? Uh, I think I do. Where they're sort of like put it on, put it on. Yeah, that one. But they're they're superimposed against like London traffic being sped up and things like that. Yes, I and do remember. Maybe that. there's. It, it reminds me of that. Right. <laughs> are you saying that uh, Discovery Plus are using 90s Spice Girls technology? Well... 2000s? 90s. 2000s? 90s. 90s. Yeah. Considering um, they probably sourced it in the same department as they got their uh, fake Pokemon. Royalty-free <laughs> Pokemon. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, he sent her a ring in the post. Radical move. Don't know what the post is like in Iran. Uh, I mean, look, it's very possible that they have a super secure postal system in Iran. 
I don't know. Over here, mm, things do go walkies now and then. I guess what I don't understand is if they're going to see each other, if they're going to get married anyway, why does she need to have the ring beforehand that badly? (laughs) Maybe it's like a hostage situation. You know how you need like proof of life in a hostage situation? Oh, maybe they need... Okay. It's a proof of intent. Proof of love life. Um... And once again, she has another friend who is, uh, for lack of a better word, trolling the audience (laughs) by saying, I really don't think you should get married because you only met once. That's why, not because he's (laughs) definitely scamming you. I just don't, how could someone who seems so normal and so grounded otherwise be so blind. I don't know. Like people will go to ridiculous lengths to um, achieve out of their league. Right. And I think that Emma finds him out of her league. I actually differ. Um, I, I, I certainly wouldn't, I mean, I don't think he's, I don't think he's that attractive really. I mean, we've discussed this before, you know, um, he is, he is a tree, right? He is just a big lump of wood. Um, but I think she really feels that she kind of got a hole in one there. So. But the day to day life of that. Don't marry it. Particularly in this small village where I'm guessing the Persian cuisine is not authentic. Oh, I no. could be wrong. Oh, I'm sure it is. Um, okay. I mean, I think that's that's taking a big gamble. She did say there's nothing to do but get drunk and kind of get your nails done, right? Or get your hair done. But how much is that to do in Tehran? Who knows? I am not a travel journalist. <laughs> I was going to say. I have not been to Tehran. The only things I've seen of Tehran do not make it look like a tourist destination. Well, she is looking forward to taking him uh, to a proper nightclub. She's looking forward to him taking his shirt off. Um, you that, know, it, It's like the, the diametric opposite of the love in paradise scene. <laughs> Oh God, it really is. She's <laughs> she's looking forward to showing him off, I that, guess. That's really what it is. Yeah. Um, she she wants reflected glory, doesn't she? Yeah, but yeah. it's really I uh, yeah. Okay. Um Hey, men have been doing this for years. It, of course they have. Right. And I believe in equal rights for women to throw their money at some arm candy. Yeah. I just don't think it's going to work out in the way that she envisions. And I think it gets really boring um, building a life with someone who's on their phone all the time. I, I don't think that, I don't know what she gets from him. As Michelle's saying this, I'm, I'm playing. I know. (laughs) I'm staring daggers at you. Why are you playing Pokemon while we're recording? I am not playing Pokemon. (sighs) Anyway, she rolls up to uh, her friend, the aesthetic nurse. Um, Claire Andrews, uh, really bad news for all you listeners out there because there was going to be a rush on the Clickeaton aesthetic uh, nursing industry. Um, Claire Andrews' website sadly is down. I wanted to do a bit of digging on her, um, but but sadly I, I got a 404 error. But I have managed to find a price list on her Facebook page. Okay, that's fine. You know, a lot of businesses took a hit in the pandemic, so um, you can keep being a snob about it while she's out there grinding. I'm not being a snob. I'm just saying that Gareth, the guy who does the app for Discovery Plus, has probably also done the development for a website. Messed up again, haven't you, Gareth? Mm, I don't know. So she's getting a... What are nasolabial lines? These. Oh, so there's nothing to do with... No. Okay, just wondering. Ugh, Robin. What are marionette lines? These. (laughs) Now you're just trapping me because you're... I've been trying to maintain the illusion that I am young and beautiful, and now you're just getting me to indicate how my wizened face is aging more rapidly than I would like. Speaking of which, judging by her outfit, 
Uh, Emma is ready to enroll Claire, the aesthetic nurse, in The Guilty Remnant. Yeah. Um, for those of you who didn't get that extremely deep cut, that was that is the uh, cult from The Leftovers where people just sit and smoke and wear little signs reminding people that uh, life is futile and the world is going to end. Yeah. Um, it's the best thing that's ever been on television. I will go so far as to say it is better than anything Shakespeare ever wrote. I think The Leftovers is the high point and pinnacle of human culture. I also loved the book, loved the television show even more. So You like Justin Theroux without clothes on. I like Justin Theroux with clothes on. I like him particularly in those gray joggers. And <laughs> I think the listeners know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I the, don't need to say more about that. The two listeners who saw The Leftovers. But you are special people. If they've not seen The Leftovers, they've seen the gif or they've seen paparazzi photos of him <laughs> jogging and Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Boy, oh boy, there was a lot left over there. <laughs> was there? I thought he was circumcised. I'm not. <laughs> Those jogging pants are loose. You cannot tell his religion or nature of his whatnot. All right. We'll I'm stop. just saying there was a lot of swing as he jogs. We'll stop. Uh... But you said there's not a lot left over. Uh, well, first, I'm not going to retroactively go back and craft this gag. Um, I Perhaps I'm, I'll rebuild it from scratch. When God was making dicks, he didn't have much left over because he made Justin Theroux's one. Okay. okay. All right. I follow now. Good. Um, anyway. Imagine that day for God. <laughs> and on the eighth day. You finished? Yeah. Okay. Um, Claire, perhaps the only honest person in Emma's life, is not expecting things to work out between them for lots of reasons, including that Emma is very independent, that they have cultural differences, um, and she does hope that that he feels the same way Emma does. Okay, so the one thing that we haven't seen of Hossein is um, any sign that they're going to go for that um, he's a Muslim man with expectations storyline. Because as far as I can tell, the, 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 there aren't really cultural differences. He goes to the gym and he likes bling, right? He might also not be Muslim. Yeah, he might not be. Yeah, probably is, but he might not be. You're right. Um but I don't, I don't think there will. I don't think cultural differences is going to be their problem. Let's put it that way. No, and it, unless the culture is sort of the like, do you even lift, bro? Right. Culture versus right. the sitting on the sofa culture. Um, she artfully compares Emma. Artfully compares talking to Hossein <laughs> to talking to a tree. Those are her words. Quite like trees. Um. She Prince Charles used to speak to trees famously. He was he was mocked for it for speaking to his plants and his trees to help them grow. I think this is where um, we can step step over into royalty corner and <clears throat> reveal to the listeners that you are a Prince Charles stan, that you are a Prince Charles defender, and that you hated princess diana wow you really are trying to obliterate my reputation aren't you? <laughs> no but that's the truth i have thoughts and you can share them because it's royalty corner <laughs> oh really all right we can save it's it a for very Patreon. unpopular perspective all right we'll save it for we'll save it for behind the bank <laughs> um she's still speaking to him in that broken english uh, yeah, kind of that. robotic voice. It's so embarrassing, but it is very authentic. Maybe, look, she knows better than we do. Maybe he only under, understands her that way. I don't think he understands her at all. I think no. he understands um, the transaction that's being made, and uh, that's about it. And maybe, maybe her willingness. I also have a feeling that he's got more than one on the go. Oh, almost certainly. Uh, and that he's hedging his bets, taking a punt. 
But you know what we're doing here? We're trying to have a conversation about two people and we honestly have no idea about them because this sh- the show has been a bit weird with this one. Like usually by this point, we would have spent a bit of time yeah, with the other person. Yeah, that's true. So like, you know, I feel like I'm dancing around this particular plot line and, and you guys listening are probably feeling like, we, you know, what do we really have to say? We don't really have a lot to say because they're not really showing us very much. So that's kind of where we are, right? I can only speculate. I mean, I've got one of those brains that tries desperately to recognize a pattern or or make something work and fit together but this this one just doesn't well we'll find out um hopefully next week get it done but um i guess that's all for this week right yeah that's all um tweet us or instagram us grandmas grandmas (laughs) grandmas At Blady Day on Instagram and Twitter, obviously. Email us at bladydayfiance at gmail.com. I read every single one of your messages, and I think I have responded to all of them. So they do not hit a, some filter and then go into some nebulous nowhere. They really mean the world to me, really and truly. Yeah, and the nice ones, she reads to me as I go to sleep at night. Yes, which is so lovely for both of us. But uh, I really feel the listeners <laughs> are my heartbeat. And they brought you back to life. They have brought me back to life Have a wonderful week, everyone. We have lots of exciting things coming up. Don't forget to send us your questions for our immigration lawyer. And fingers and toes crossed, we might have some special guests coming up soon before the end of the series. Right. Do that and keep uh, keep doing your reviews, um, particularly on Apple Podcasts. Um, Michelle is hard at work designing the luxury tote bag that she will hand make for the one that makes us guffaw the most. Correct. So without any further ado, catch race time. See See you soon. soon.